In the name of God, the gracious, the merciful, we give him praise and thanks for his mercy and his goodness to the human family. If all the trees upon the earth were pens to write with, and if all the oceans were ink, and then another seven oceans to add to its supply, the writing would still not be enough to explain the glory of God, for he's the exalted, all powerful, all wise. And even if I lived to be a thousand, it still would not be enough to thank God for his many blessings and gifts. We confide in no other in our time of need, and we praise no other in our good fortune. We thank the most high, one and only God for the metu netter, scriptures, oracles, and writings thousands of years before Judaism, Christianity, and Islam, the metu netter. We thank God for Moses in the Torah, Jesus in the gospel, and Muhammad ibn Allah, peace be upon him, with the Quran. We greet everyone in words of peace. To my Christian family, praise the Lord. To my Muslim family, assalamu alaikum. To my Hebrew Israelite family, shalom. To my black conscious family, hotep. And to my people in the street, what's good with you? This is Brother Sharif once again coming to you on the YouTube channel, Hour of Power. Go to Hour of Power, Sharif Hamid. Subscribe and share to the channel. Subscribe and share to the, pa to the channel. We have plenty um, interviews on this channel with key people in the community. Plenty ideologies that fit pretty much anyone's uh, um, ideology or background and plenty timely messages to lift the mind, body, and soul of our people. Again, hour of power, Sharif Hamid, subscribe and share. So uh, this evening, family, I wanna talk about uh, a different topic um, that many people may not be aware of, uh, or you may be aware of part of the topic, but not specifically what um, the topic I wanna talk about tonight. And that's the uh, medical exploitation of black people here in America. Many people have heard of the horrific story of the Tuskegee experiment in 1932, where the government wanted to, they had started this experiment around 1929 uh, to figure out how syphilis affected black men compared to white males or the white race, so to speak. And uh, to make a long story short, because I know many of you have, have, have at least heard of this, uh, they tricked 399 males, black males, in um, Alabama there with this experiment. Those males did not know they were being infected with syphilis, and then they go and infect their wives and significant others, and it's called the Tuskegee Syphilis Experiment, experimenting on black bodies, black men, in particular, which they infected black women as if we're some kind of guinea pigs or animals. That's the famous, uh, not for a good reason, but the well-known Tuskegee syphilis experiment. Um, you can get more information about that um, in this book, Medical Apartheid, Medical Apartheid by uh, uh, Harriet Washington, Medical Apartheid. It has documents and documents and documents in there about the medical experiments of black people, not just with the Tuskegee uh, syphilis experiment, but with things that will actually blow your mind. And again, that's medical apartheid, a must read for any black man, uh, woman and child in America. Expose that kind of knowledge to your children because they're not going to teach it to them in school. Another experiment so to speak, that I want to let people know about is in the late 1800s with a man by the name of Marion Sims. I have talked about this before. His name is actually Dr. Marion Sims. It's a, a, um, a statue. <laughs> We're talking about statues so much now with all this uh, uh, drama going on in Charlottesville, Virginia, with the statue of uh, General Robert Lee being removed, who was a slave owner. Well, just to show you how wicked this country is and how they celebrate slave owners and people who have oppressed and abused and mistreated black people. 
there is a statue. They need to knock that one down, too, in Central Park in New York of Marion, Dr. Marion Sims. This man used to go from plantation to plantation. One of them was in Alabama in the late 18, mid 1850s. And what he did was he was uh, trying to perfect gynecology because the statue of him right now in Central Park in New York he is recognized as the father of gynecology. He was going from plantation to plantation, practicing gynecology on black women. Actually had people off the streets and his follow, uh, 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 fellow doctors, who I call them henchmen, uh, pinning black women down on the table, putting forceps and tools up their vagina with no anesthesia. This Dr. Marion Sims. He did at least 30, um, uh, operations on a slave, black slave named Ann Arca, a female slave alone. He did at least 30 operations on her alone. What pin her down on a table, spread her legs apart and people would hold her down as he would go up in her vagina with forceps and tools. And she would be screaming and hollering her and other slaves, but she's the most well-known one because he did 30 operations on her alone. And even some of the people he had pinning her down saying, uh, doc, don't you, uh, she's in pain. Listen to the way she's screaming. He said, no, that's just an act. These, these niggers have a high threshold of pain. They don't need no anesthesia. That's how vicious this man was. And he gets a statue in Central Park in New York, Dr. Marion Sims. And he's touted as the father of gynecology, but they don't tell you how he got there, how he used to force um, operations on black women, 30 on Anarcha alone. And he has a statue in New York to show you how this country celebrates those who were slave owners and those who openly and had no problem with oppressing and mistreating and abusing black people. It ain't just about what's going on in Charlottesville, Virginia, here in Durham, North Carolina. Uh, some uh, protesters, so to speak, right? That's where I'm at in Durham, North Carolina, toppled down um, uh, a Confederate uh, statue. It's everywhere you go. It's either a street, a statue, a university, a university, an elementary school, something named after slave owners and oppressors and tormentors of black people. This is what this country does and they're proud of it. It's their heroes. George Washington, Thomas Jefferson, Quincy Adams, on and on and on. The signer of the Declaration of Independence, on and on and on. A case I want to tell you about on top of those two is a place in Georgia, Augustus, Augusta, Georgia, called the Medical College of Georgia. The Medical College of Georgia. In 1989, es um, uh, uh, construction workers was working on the East Wing at this Medical College of Georgia. They were renovating it. And what happened was they start unearthing in this, uh, uh, in this part of the college and when they started digging because they was building a new wing, they found 10,000 body parts, 10,000 body parts in the East Wing at the Medical College of Georgia in Augusta, in Augusta, Georgia. They called the police. They got the coroner's office there. They found out that uh, 85 to 90 percent of those bones found there were bones of black people. This is in 1989. We ain't talking in 1389, 1489, no, four or 500 years ago. This happened in 1989 at the Medical College of Georgia in Augustus, Georgia. In Augusta, Georgia, construction workers found 10,000 body parts, bones and fragments there. And once the coroner's office got there, they found that these were mostly bones of black people. And then when they went into the writings, they found out that medical students there, they knew that a law had came up in 1887 that you were not allowed to go unearth people's bones for medical research. So what did they do? They hired a black man who was already a slave at this college and in that area since 1852. His name was Grandison Harris. Write this stuff down. Grandison Harris was a slave there 
on campus and in that area since 1852. He actually worked for the college for 50 years as an employee. Then he became a full-time grave robber for the Medical College of Georgia. They hired this man, they had hired others, but he was the most well-known one. Again, his name was Grandison Harris. Grandison Harris. They hired him to go to graves to unearth the graves of black people, and in particularly a grave called Cedar Grove Cemetery right there close to the, um, to the college. Why there? Because it wasn't well kept, because back then, of course, it was segregation and it was no security or anything there. So he basically had his way. He could go into the cemetery, dig up bodies because the coffins were very thin. They weren't well constructed. They didn't have no vault to, to shut it like you have now. They were basically wooden boxes. He could dig up the grave, dig up the body, and then bring it back for medical research. And what they would do back then, laws were different. It would actually tell you what someone had died from in the paper. So whatever their local paper was at that time, it would say, uh, Mr. Jones died of heart failure. So if those students at the Medical College of Georgia was doing research on the heart, they would know what grave and what person to go to because they already knew what they died from because it was in the paper. Of course, because of privacy, they don't have that now, but you're talking about in the 1870s. If someone had kidney failure, uh, 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 Mr. Mr. Black died of kidney failure. They would go to his grave uh, if they want to do research on kidneys. And they would hire this man, Grandison Harris, who was a slave already since 1852. They made him a full-time grave robber. He robbed so many graves that they renamed him the Resurrection Man. The Resurrection Man. This is documented proof in a book called um, Bones in the Basement by Dr. Robert Blakely. I'm going to say it again. Bones in the Basement by Dr. Robert Blakely will tell you how Grandison Harris, the Resurrection Man, was hired by the Medical College of Georgia. And they found 10,000 body parts and bones in this wing at the Medical College of Georgia. Construction workers did. And most of them were black bodies. And Grandison Harris, the Resurrection Man, a slave hired by the Medical College of Georgia, which is still standing today, hired this man to unearth rob graves at a black cemetery called Cedar Grove Cemetery. Anyone could just go there and do what they wanted because it was segregated. The graves um, um, were easy to dig into and the coffins were made of thin wood. And he would just go in there and rob graves and was bringing bodies and bodies and bodies back for medical research. And they found this out in 1989 at the Medical College of Georgia. I'm still looking for the research, but um, if I'm not mistaken, during Bill Clinton's uh, uh, presidency, I think he mentioned this at a secret uh, meeting there at the White House and he apologized to some of the family members who were survived by some of the people there at the college. But be, because some so, so many of the body parts and bones were uh, spread out so much, it was hard for them to identify everyone. But don't quote me on that, but I'm pretty sure I read it somewhere in an article that Bill Clinton actually mentioned this and apologized um, during his presidency. So again, the Medical College of Georgia Bones in the basement, 10,000 bones, hired a black man, a slave by the name of Grandison Harris, the resurrection man, to go to Cedar Grove Cemetery there in Georgia, off campus of the Medical College of Georgia, Augusta, Georgia, to rob. He was a grave robber, a black man. And actually, if you Google uh, 1877, uh, class of 1877 at the Medical College of Georgia, you will see these students who uh, pushed him up to rob graves and and you will see a black man at the top in the back of this uh, class picture the class of 1877 that's Grandison Harris again the class of 1877 at the Medical College of Georgia you'll see these students who were dissecting these bodies for medical research they hired Grandison Harris they hired him so if anyone get caught it wouldn't be them getting caught it would be him and he robbed so many graves, he was uh, renamed the Resurrection Man. 
class of 1877 at the Medical College of Georgia, you'll see these students who did this and you'll see a black man at the very back of the picture. Not real clear, but you'll see a black man. He's the only black one there. That was Grandison Harris. So this is what we have faced and they're still doing it. They're still doing it. That's why so many black people are nervous about uh, going uh, to the doctor and going, uh, um, you know, getting medical research and things like that because of this history. Get this book, a, a, me a Medical Apartheid by Harriet Washington, one of the most powerful books I have ever read. So again, this is the Hour of Power with Sharif Hamid. Subscribe and share. Subscribe and share. I leave you all in words of peace. Again, research the Tuskegee syphilis experiment. Dr. Marion Sims, uh, uh, known as the father of gynecology, and Bones in the Basement by Dr. Robert uh, Blakely with the Medical College of Georgia in a class of 1877 where it shows a picture of the resurrection man, a black man, a slave, Grandison Harris. I'll meet you all in words of peace as I came. Go to that hour of power, subscribe and share. Assalamu alaikum.